Fertilizing your garden is essential if you want your plants to be their healthiest and most productive. And who wouldn't want that? There are tons of organic fertilizer products on the market, and I've read that many of them work quite well. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably noticed that we don't use any store-bought fertilizers, aside from adding organic worm castings when starting seeds. At least, as far as you know, we don't use any fertilizer products around here. I mean, who knows what's going on when the camera's off? These could all be fake plants. But, well... Okay, that's real. The rest are fake. I'm kidding. But you're just going to have to trust me on all of that. Uh, but I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't ever use any fertilizer products. But I will strongly suggest that you choose organics over synthetic because the organics are certainly going to be better for soil biology and the environment at large. But my wife and I already have our own reasons for trying to grow food without using any store-bought fertilizers. And they are, number one, it saves money. Number two, it saves time from having to research products and go buy something. And number three, we already have plenty of resources available right here at home that we can use to fertilize our garden. And that's what I'd like to show you today. Homemade compost is definitely our most important resource because it's packed with a wide variety of plant nutrients and it improves the texture of our heavy clay soil. We make ours from kitchen scraps, coffee grounds, and yard waste. We take the Charles Dowding approach and just lay the compost on the surface rather than tilling it in, which can harm and even destroy soil biology. Sometimes I don't even wait until it's finished before spreading it lightly around the garden. If you'd like to learn more about why compost is so great, you can check out this video I made last year with the link in the corner or in the description. Our next great resource is grass clippings, or more accurately in our case, lawn clippings. We have a number of species growing here that are much more abundant than grass. White clover and dandelions are excellent nutrient accumulators, so I'm happy to use them as a green mulch. I'm really not too worried about introducing weed seeds to the garden. The square foot method keeps the beds densely packed for the most part, and we always keep some kind of mulch on the surface. Another excellent and convenient way to fertilize your garden is with the chop and drop method. When a plant is done growing for the season and you've gathered all your harvest, you can simply chop the plant off at ground level and drop it on the soil to decompose. I'd like to take a look at our peas as an example because they're a nitrogen fixer and the first round of peas is just finishing up right now. We started our peas directly in the garden at the end of March because they can handle a light freeze and we knew they would have enough time to grow and harvest before the tomatoes and other things started to take over. Since we started using vertical trellises, these are absolutely the tallest peas we've grown yet. Now, I usually like to cut these off at the soil level because it's better to let the roots decompose in the soil. However, with this one, I'm going to pull it out of the ground so I can show you something. These nodules appear on the roots of plants in the legume family, and these are where nitrogen-fixing bacteria live. If you'd like me to do an in-depth video on how this whole process works, please let me know in the comments below. For now, you just need to understand that these bacteria are necessary in converting atmospheric nitrogen into other forms that plants can use. So leaving the roots to decompose in the soil ensures that the bacteria, along with their plant-friendly nitrogen, will be available for other plants in the next growing season. So after cutting the plant off at the base, I chop it up and spread it around the garden. I do this with everything we grow here as long as it's not harboring pests and it hasn't contracted any bacterial or fungal diseases. In that case, I throw it in the trash. We always grow a variety of legumes, not only for their delicious and protein-rich seed pods, but for their fertilizing benefits too. Remember the white clover I mentioned earlier? That's also a legume, so I'm glad we already have plenty of that growing here. Comfrey is a fantastic all-around nutrient accumulator, and it's often grown specifically as a chop-and-drop fertilizer. This amazing plant deserves a video all to itself, so if you'd like me to make a video about that too, please let me know in the comments. We just started growing it this year, and I recommend the species Bakken 14 because it's sterile and won't spread by seed. It is a very hardy plant, however, and it can multiply easily if you dig it up and don't remove all the roots. All of these plants were started with small root cuttings, and I'm already afraid that we may have too many. 
I'm sure we'll find plenty of uses for it though. Borage is also quite useful for attracting pollinators, for its edible flowers, and as a chop and drop fertilizer. Borage is an annual, but it's a prolific self-sower. We probably won't have to plant it again after this year. So that's most of what we have available right now that can be used to boost fertility in the garden. And some other good fertilizer plants include stinging nettle and some cover crops like alfalfa, red clover, and hairy vetch. Green organic matter provides food for bacteria, and most vegetables prefer to grow in soil where bacteria dominate, so green mulch is better for your annual vegetable garden. Perennial trees and shrubs, on the other hand, prefer soils with more fungal activity, so for those, brown mulches like wood chips and fall leaves are best. So you can see that we already have plenty of resources available right here to keep fertilizing our garden indefinitely. In fact, the fertility should continue to improve as long as we keep chopping and dropping. And it doesn't cost anything to make compost. We can always get more wood chips for free. We get an annual resupply of autumn leaves. And I realize that you may not have all of these resources available where you live, but I encourage you to take a look at what you do have or what you could grow to use for fertilizer. You may be surprised at some different ways that you could save some time and money. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.